Hi, I'm, I'm Terry Etherton, owner of Etherton Gallery here in Tucson. And today I want to do a second installment of a reading from the book, uh, Looking at Photographs. This is a book that was published in 1973 by the Museum of Modern Art. And the book illustrates 100 uh, photographs from the Museum of Modern Art's collection selected by John Zarkovsky, uh, who then writes about each one. Z John Zarkovsky, for those of you who don't know, was arguably the most influential photography curator of the 20th century. He is responsible for championing the work of Gary Winogrand, Lee Friedlander, Diane Arbus, William Eggleston, and many more people. Uh, so if you guys are not familiar with him, you should find something to read by him because in my estimation, no one wrote better about photography than John. So I'll read a little bit from the introduction of this book and then we'll talk about a particular entry. This is a picture book and its first purpose is to provide the material for simple delectation. So says author John Zarkowski in his introduction to this book, the first survey of the Museum of Modern Art's photography collection. Not only does this volume show a handsome selection of 100 of these photographs, but it also serves as an excellent introduction to the aesthetics of photography. So I'll now read the entry from looking at photographs uh, about the photograph Eleanor Port Huron by Harry Callahan. Since at least the middle of the 19th century, artists have advised each other to find their subject matter close to home, among things native to their own experience, and by and large, they've done so. There are not many pa major painters of the period who, like Paul Gauguin, could comfortably provide the inspiration for a Somerset Mom novel. Among photographers also, most of those who have produced the medium's memorable work have dealt with issues from their everyday lives, subject matter that they know very well. Nevertheless, the work of most artists clearly aims at extrapolating from their personal experience to make it the vessel for a broader and more universal statement. Such work invites us to work our way outward from the private and the specific to the larger world. Harry Callahan's work is an exception, for it draws us ever more insistently inward toward the center of Callahan's private sensibility. This sensibility is expressed in his perception of subject matter that is remarkably personal and restricted in its range. For 30 years, Callahan has photographed his wife and child, the streets of the city in which he has lived, and the details of the pastoral landscapes into which he has periodically escaped. Materials so close at hand, so universally and obviously accessible, that one might have supposed that a dedicated photographer could exhaust their potential in a fraction of that time. Yet Callahan has repeatedly made these simple experiences new again by virtue of the precision of his feeling. The point is not merely that Callahan has responded faithfully as a photographer to the quality of his own life, or merely even that photography has been his method of focusing the meaning of that life. The point is that for Harry Callahan, photography has been a way of living, his way of meeting and making peace with the day. So I will show you now an original print uh, that we have to have in inventory. Uh, my hands are clean, just so you guys out there aren't worried about that. Uh, this print typically is, uh, appears this way as an 8x10 gelatin silver print. Um, to, to see this print in reproduction is one thing, but to see the actual print is really pretty amazing. The, the uh, tonal scale in this and the sort of grace with which Eleanor is reclining on this blanket are just amazing. It's something you really need to see in person to experience. As is typical of Callahan's work uh, of this type, uh, it's signed here in the lower right-hand corner in pencil, very small, very exquisite, very elegant. Um, so thank you for taking a look at this, and we'll have our next installment next week.